Hello and welcome. Today we'll be creating this 2D line differential growth simulation which extends to 3D by echoing the geometry by some transformation over time depending on a user specified amount. We'll start with the first animation and then we'll extend it to the second one in a small addendum so that you can see a small slice of all the possibilities available to you. The blend file will be available through a link in the description so check that out if you'd like and let's get into it. So open Blender, select the cube and only the cube. Delete everything else, open up a geometry nodes window and add a new modifier. First off, we'll initialize our geometry with a curve circle node and a resample curve node set to length. Then in the length input, we'll uh, use a parameters node group with a search distance value to determine the length at which we're resampling our curve. Um, next, we're going to add the simulation node group, but first let's uh, pop our initialization nodes into an initialized geometry node group. Next, we'll change the position of the curve points a little bit each frame, and then resample the curve again with the search distance parameter as the length input, so that as the curve points move and morph over time, we're adding new geometry so that the edges of the curve don't become these long lines, and instead we get a bunch of nice intricate geometry. Next, we'll create our curvature node group by subtracting the blurred or average position from the position and then taking the dot product of that with the normal attribute. The output of the dot product will be the curvature value, and then the output of the subtraction will be the average to position vector, which we'll use to change the position of each curve point over time so that it moves in the direction of its curvature by a magnitude of how much curvature there is. And you can see here that as we play this animation in the simplest possible form, you get all this big tangled mess. So what we're going to do is we're going to add a little um, awareness of the geometry to itself. You could call it collision detection um, to make sure that you don't get all of these overlapping curves and instead you get these nice shapes that kind of melt into each other. So we'll use the index of nearest node which will get the index of the current geometry that's closest to the current point that we're working with. So this allows you to then use the evaluate at index node to sample the same geometry at the index of the point that's closest to the point that we're currently setting the position for. So we'll get the distance between the current point and its closest neighbor. And then if that distance is greater than the search distance, we will move the point in this simulation step. And if not, that point doesn't move at all. The thing is, this doesn't really work because we resample the curve by the search distance every single frame. So if we're not moving each point, if its nearest neighbor is search distance away or lower, then it's a little bit too close and the points won't really move at all. So instead, we'll just multiply that search distance parameter by 0.9 so that you have a little bit more wiggle room to move. So we'll just take this little node setup and pop it into a should move node group that outputs a Boolean that tells us whether or not this point should move in this simulation frame. Then we'll take everything that we currently have in the simulation zone and put that into its own node group called move. And the next node group we're going to add is the smooth node group or what will eventually become the smooth node group. So we'll use another set position node and then use a blur attribute set to vector with the position attribute as input. If we just leave it at that, we're not going to get a very interesting animation because everything is just going to smooth out over time. So instead, we'll smooth the curved areas of the geometry more by using the curvature output of the curvature node group that we created before. We also have the multiply add math node that's going to give us more control over how much of the curved areas are smooth and how much the areas that are smoothed are smoothed over time. We're going to add some parameters to our parameters node group. It's going to be called smooth multiply and smooth add, which are going to just directly go into the multiply and add inputs of the multiply add math node. And then we're going to pop that whole node group into a smooth node group, which you can see here. Um, now we're actually going to hook up the new parameters and you're going to want to uh, set that smooth add math node to clamp, which I'm not doing here, but you'll see how this doesn't work. And then eventually I realize, oh, I didn't set multiply add to clamp. So 
don't forget to do that. Because if you don't, then the value for how much smoothing occurs isn't going to be clamped between zero and one. And so if you use that multiplier and set a lot of the curved areas to just smooth every frame, you're gonna smooth a lot and it's gonna look weird. Next, we'll take the move and smooth node group and wrap those in a repeat zone. We can change the number of iterations in the repeat zone to speed up the simulation. Next, we'll wrap that whole repeat zone in a grow node group, and then we'll add the iterations as an input to that node group, and then set that to three. And now you can see that our simulation moves a little bit faster. So you can see all these tendrils and growths coming out and you create these little paths and lines. Those are affected a lot by that multiply and add parameter value settings that we put in the parameters node group. So mess with that if you wanna get some different effects. The next step is to add the echoes or trails of our simulation to a separate piece of geometry that we're gonna call the trails geometry each frame. So we'll use a join geometry node which is gonna join the simulation geometry with the trails geometry, and we'll change the transformation of the trails geometry each frame so that they move down uh, by the search radius every single frame. So we'll take that whole add to trail setup and put that into a add to trail node group. We're also gonna name the simulation and trail geometry flows within our simulation zone. Then we'll just clean up our nodes a little bit and we're ready to actually add a mesh to our curve so that we're ready for rendering. We'll do that with a curve to mesh node that uses a curve circle node as the input to its profile curve parameter. And then the radius of that curve circle is gonna be set to the search distance divided by a small amount. Next, let's add a set shade smooth node and a set material node set to the default material. And then let's pop in our curve to mesh logic into a curve to mesh node group. Next, you can see on the left here how the curves are kind of jagged. I, I want them to be smoother and less blocky, less angular. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop in a subdivide curve node, just set that to two, and then also blur the position with a set position node. Um, set to blur the position attribute by the same amount that you're subdividing the curve by. So and the, the curve by, in this case too. So just pop that into a smooth curve node group that goes in before the curve to mesh node. And that just about covers the simulation and geometry creation. And now we can safely move on to materials and lighting and rendering. So this is gonna be pretty similar to most of the setups that I like doing, make an orthographic camera point it at our subject and then add some directional lights. In this case, just one sunlight to start with. We're going to add another one later on. Then just start messing with materials and colors. I start with this sort of like copper look looking thing <laughs> and I'm switching. I'm deciding between a metallic look and a subsurface scattering. I decided that red with a lot of subsurface looked too much like intestines. And so I moved into a, a totally different direction made everything blue, added a, a little light, uh, you know, unsaturated yellow background, add in that depth of field there, tune it to your liking as usual. And then I'm just messing with the depth of field. Um, I've added another sunlight on coming from the left side that's a little bit softer than the first sunlight and a little bit less bright. Um, and then, you know, you're just fulfilling your artistic vision until you have something that makes you feel warm and fuzzy inside. If you want to get the effect from the second animation, all you have to do is change the rotation and scale inputs of the transform geometry node in the add to trail node group. So just scale the X and Y axes by something a little bit less than one, like 0.99, and then rotate around the Z axis by something very small. I started with two degrees, that was a little bit too much go to one degree and you're good. And with that, I think we're done. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you learned something. And above all, I hope you had fun. Until next time. Bye.